Hello and welcome to another Excel training video from Rich Kerr. So in this scenario we're going to talk about figuring out the hurdle rate or weighted average cost of capital uh, for a firm. Um, this is also sometimes referred to as the minimum acceptable rate of return. So it's a, it's a value that companies will use to determine whether or not an investment or a project is worthwhile undertaking. And so there are a few uh, things that we want to take into consideration to calculate the hurdle rate. Uh, and the first thing we need is the internal rate of return. So the internal rate of return basically is an assessment of uh, how much, well, what kind of rate of return we would need to uh, match just what's happening in the market combined with what you could get from say fixed income or fixed investments like uh, treasuries so I'll have that calculated in the first three cells so uh, what we'll do is we'll put in the values and then we'll explore the formulas so let's say that the t-bill rate uh, is actually 0.11 percent for a three-month t-bill uh, so we're gonna say that for this evaluation we're looking at a three-month time horizon for our hurdle rate and we'll say that we expect uh, that the market will grow, uh, let's say, 1.5% during that time frame. So investing in the market in a general sense could yield 1.5%. So in the beta field, so beta is a measurement of volatility relative to the market. So let's say that you're trying to calculate a hurdle rate because you're thinking about uh, investing in a new division of your company overseas uh, or you're purchasing another security and uh, your assessment of that investment is that it is about 25 percent more risky or more volatile than the market so we would put a beta coefficient of 1.25 so that means that we think that this investment or this security is 25 percent more volatile than the market itself so this now calculates an internal rate of return of 1.85%. So it's saying if you can get 1.5% on the market and you can get 0.11% just investing in treasuries and the investment that you're evaluating has a beta of 1.25, the internal rate of return that you need to achieve to make this a worthwhile investment is 1.85%. And we evaluate that by taking the government treasury and adding to it the beta coefficient multiplied by the market growth minus the treasury. So you're taking what you could earn from a treasury and multiplying it by the difference between market growth and the treasury rate. Uh, and that's how that gives us our internal rate of return. But the problem with the internal rate of return is that it doesn't take into effect uh, the cost of capital. And so when you want to do a true evaluation of your investment you want to incorporate the cost of capital for your debt what kind of tax rate you're paying uh, on your income and uh, the assets that you have your your owner's equity and your liabilities so let's take a look at that let's say that uh, the firm has liabilities liabilities of three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars and that we have uh, owners uh, equity of one million uh, and that we're taxed at a 35% corporate tax rate and let's say that we're paying 4% on our debt so when you take those factors into consideration then our required uh, minimum investment uh, return or our hurdle rate is 2.04% it's moved up because we're now looking at how much we're paying on the debt that we have uh, and we have liabilities of 350k. So to make this worthwhile, just doing 1.85 cent uh, percent as an internal rate of return is not going to cover um, the cost of capital uh, along with what we could be earning by just going into the market with our money. Uh, so let's look at how the hurdle rate is calculated. Uh, so what I did is I, I named the cells that are used and I've got the formula encased in the if error function so uh, without that you would get a divide by zero error message until you had filled in uh, the data in the yellow section or the yellow range so uh, that's just that's the purpose of the if error function 
So what we do is we take the internal rate of return figured out in cell E1, and I've, I've named that cell IRR, and we multiply that by the owner's equity divided by the liabilities plus the owner's equity. So that first part is multiplying the rate of return uh, by the ratio of owner's equity uh, over liabilities plus owner's equity. We add that to the cost of capital, so that's the 4% multiplied uh, by one minus the, the tax rate. So uh, that then discounts this uh, by what we're paying in taxes. Uh, and then we multiply that by liabilities over liabilities plus owner's equity. Uh, so what this is doing is taking the cost of the money that we, that we have to invest and using that to help determine what our hurdle rate is. And we combine that with the internal rate of return and we discover that our hurdle rate is 2.04%. Uh, so that's really the minimum return you need on the investment that you're undertaking to make it a worthwhile endeavor. Uh, so there's all sorts of sites online that talk about internal rate of return and hurdle rate as those are higher end financial calculations. But once again, Excel can handle it with ease once we know the formulas to use. Thanks a lot, and tune in again for more Excel tips.